not too close. I don't want to get too many close-ups. And the boot, it's going now, so, so it's rolling, isn't it? So yeah, don't let rolling. it go. Yeah, 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 yeah. OK. Yeah. 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 So we're back again, Mick and Glenn, um, for another tip. Now, this is the best tip of the lot. You think so, Mick? Yes. This is the best tip. And it's the bond. I mean, I know you see that Stuart Compton and Bob Songer, and they do all these bonds, English bond, Flemish garden wall, English garden Monk Bond, Brook Bond, James Bond, you name it, they do it. But they've all got one thing in common, and it's they all looking for upright perps, which can be a pain, especially if you're doing garden walls. You, if you're just beginning, this is good for beginners, you don't want all that aggro. You bricklayers know what it's like. You get a, in between a frame, and it's a bit big for brickwork, and you open it up, and then you tight all that. So, the one hassle about, obviously, quarter bond, but all those others, English garden, well, they all involve Queen's closures and that, is you have to cut some three quarters. Now, we did a bit of film earlier. Um, sadly, Mick messed a lot of the film up, so we're doing it again now. Mick, it's not your fault, I know, but I had a complaint um, that they felt seasick watching the last video. So I'm, I'm, no, it's nothing against you, Mick, but the bloke said I was seasick. I mean, that, no, no, don't. Don't mess about, because this is serious, and it's our reputation as film people that... But it wouldn't have been so bad, but he's been in the Royal Navy for 30 years. <laughs> and he said he'd never been seasick, and he'd been around Cape Horn. Anyway, so we had to do this one again. So this, me cutting the three quarters, was one we did earlier. That's what they say, isn't it? So that's it, Mick. I'll lay a couple more for you. What about the three quarters? Well, what do you mean, cut the three quarters? Yeah, show them. Can uh, you come? No, yeah, I'm filming. What about the suit? Don't know. OK, I'll see if I... I'll show you, because three quarters is always a pain. So... Three quarters. OK, so if you're cutting three quarters... Come with me, Mick. If you're cutting three quarters, um, what I do is get something like that to put them in, so that they're all tight and not flopping about. And then... On a lot of these stocks, they've got one good end, the header, and the other end's always a little bit, blo you know, there. You'll always see it. So as much as possible, if you're doing a corner, keep that end on the end, not that end, because it looks, it's got a bevel there. So when you're cutting three quarters, put that good end there. So we're going to cut the rough end off. You know what I mean? That's not a very good bit, so I'll take that out. So, we've got our bricks lined up. Now, funnily enough, a level is actually the right sort of width to get a three quarter. So, what you don't do is cut this one because you're gonna lose your good edge. So cut this end and get rid of that bevel, you know? So we just put it down there. It ain't gotta be particularly because it's a rough wall, we're doing it a bit rustic. You haven't got to get fanatical about everything. That's three quarters. And I, you think I won't get dirty? Nah. Okay. And then you've got to get your cutter. I'll stand over here. Well, because of the dust. Well, the, what about me? Fucking hell. Um, Just get on with it. This time. They might come in handy in the wall. Now, I'm back again now. And so this is what you do for the corners, OK? Mick, 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 Mick. Okay. On the bond, what we do, you have your free quarter, and then you can have a stretcher, which is a full brick to them that don't know, header, 
But then what you do, there's no pattern. You can now put four stretches. The next one, header, header, a stretcher, stretcher, sorry. Then I can have a header there. There is no mix. Just give them a little look at what we did. Okay. And they can see. You can see there's no pattern to the bond. Look, one, two stretches, header. You also get the reds of the brick come out when you do this. And you're not looking for upright perps. So if you have to cut a brick in the wall, it's not too bad. And the other thing, Mick, this is Mick's favourite trick. This is top tip for Mick. You can also quite easily create a little pattern. Can you see that? Yep. When you do it, when you do it, use the darker bricks around the outside, then the header one there, put a dark one in the middle. It's very easy, but they don't notice it. But if you tell the people, Mick, got me? Yeah, if you good. tell them, it's quite nice, you know what I mean? It's an individual thing they've got in their wall. And me and Mick do one in all our walls, maybe two or three sometimes if we're in the mood. Um, but that's, ah, the other thing, Mick. Yeah. Where's that dustbin lid? Top tip. Hang on, wait a minute. Where have you hid it? There, over there. Where? Where is it? Are your eyes, okay? Where? There. there. I had it near me, where is it? There. I had it somewhere. Okay, this is a, this is a, um, start again. This is another top tip. If you're working in someone's garden, um, a dustbin lid on the mixer, sometimes, you know when it splashes all over their patio or their furniture, and that, especially when you're knocking up pub, that stops all that splashing. That's a good tip, Mick, isn't it? That is a good tip. And it stops, and then when you tip it out, this is mixed tip, Stop the mixer. Don't tip it out with the mixer running because it will splash. Stop the mixer. Tip it out slowly. Obviously some will stay in the mixer, we know that. But then when you turn the mixer on, the wetter stuff's usually at the front and that's gone in and it won't be so bad. You know, it's not a big thing, but it does help. I wish it splashes everywhere. Here we go. Okay, we're back again. This is the last bit for today. Um, and what I'm going to show you now is, so, by the way, fog up, you keep moaning about it. So I'm laying fog up for you so you don't complain. Um, mind you, most of you lay fog down anyway. Mick, what's your rule for um, fog up and fog down? You've got a rule for it, haven't you? Hey, have, you got, have you got me in camera? No, I haven't. Well, get me in camera. Oh, sorry. What's your rule for fog up and fog down? When do you use fog up? You've got a rule, haven't you? Fog up to get up. Fog up to get up. Fog down to get, get down. down. It's mix, mix rule, okay? Um, so now listen, it's basically put header in, like so. Then just like a another one. Then we'll have another stretcher. So, what I'm doing is just putting Edison stretchers at random. And we're doing this wall. Um, so, we've got a block wall behind it, and we've got ties in it. See these ties? So, they hold it together. But when you've got a block wall behind you, very easy because you can snap these headers and the beauty is where we're not looking for upright perks if you end up and you come along and you've got a little bit of a nick in it you won't notice it and then you carry on like that but what I want to show you is why it's so good Mick, Mick. Yeah. up here because, uh, the op -ups. oh the op ups yeah yeah come here so through here, you know I say before about the op-ups, so I don't know what you'd do to bump this out without these op-ups. Can you see what I mean? You'll be, but with the op-ups, which I said we get from Screwfix, they ought to pay me for keep saying that, but they are, they are good ones. You can get quite a lot of bricks on it. Look, I'm not bending down, bricks, pug, it doesn't get much easier than that. So, 
normally you'd have a struggle to bump this bit out. It would be, but with the op ups, it works a treat. So I just add a couple more. And uh, I've been lucky, me, with bricklaying, because I've always worked with really good bricklayers. I mean, Mick, number one, Jack, up with Mick. They are Paul Moon, same again. Neil Brown, Mickey Tre George. Trevor. Trevor. Yeah, Trevor's a, Trevor was super fast. Super fast, but Trevor. The first names there, I've sort of worked with all of those guys, partnerships and things, and they've carried me, so I've been lucky. They've all carried me, and um, Mick especially. <laughs> but anyway, well, you have, but Jack, when me and Mick used to do the programs, come a bit closer, Mick, because of the sound. Uh -huh. um, I said I'd tell you a story about Jack Wolf and Carol Vorderman, and uh, Jack is absolutely brilliant bricklayer, and not only bricklaying, he can do everything, you know, not just bricklaying. So when we were working on the telly, Jack did all the work all day, while I chatted to the film people, had cups of coffee, and Jack would work. But I knew at four o'clock, Carol Vorderman was coming back, and they would start filming. So every time Carol turned up, I see her coming, I tell Jack to have a rest. I say, sit down, Jack, have a coffee. Of course. Carol would come along and she'd say to me, Glenn, are you on your own again? Do it, what's Jack? I said, well, he, no, he's all right, he's having a coffee, you know. She'd say, well, you seem to be doing it. Yesterday he was, I said, that's what it's like, Carol. So she thought I was doing all the work. Well, that was funny enough, but when it went out on television, everyone that watched it said, what was your mate Jack doing? Doesn't he do anything? Does he sit around all day drinking coffee? They thought I did it all. And in fact, it was Jack. And uh, so anyone who saw it knows it. Where am I? Too much gassing, really. OK, lads, it's me, Glenn. Um, I'm doing the filming at the moment because sometimes mixed camera work's not that great. I mean, he tries. Give him his due, he does have a go, but he keeps shaking. It's the wine that him and Marion drink at night. Just to show you this quarter bond, you know, I'm so into it, and I'd so like you young lads to start using it. If you look at this wall, it's got so much character. There you see the diamond that we was on about before, which you can put in the wall. And if you're doing a nine-inch wall and there's block work behind it, you can use all the headers that might otherwise get discarded. Even a couple of different bricks of headers, chuck them in the wall, it just looks so much better than a bland half bomb wall. It's got character, which is what we're after, a bit of character. And you can get away with a lot more with this sort of wall, and the customer will like it a lot better, guarantee you, because it's individual. What else can we say, Mick, about that, the bond? It's very easy if you're doing cuts, look, Mick, on here. If you're doing a cut-up like we've done here, because we're not worried about the bond, we can cut these bits, so if you cut a brick in two, you can keep putting both bits in the wall because you're not having to follow the bond. And even if you put a little bit, see there's a little bit in there, it yeah. doesn't notice. You're not thinking, oh, he's lost the bond, you know? Forget all them upright perps. They are a pain. I mean, on that building, I could show you, Mick, couldn't we? Shall we show them down the building? We can do if you what want. What that corner's like. Yeah. Come in me, Mick. Hang on. I'm just showing you the okay. something. Oh, you film that. And uh, we're lucky. We're working for some really nice people here. And... Um, They've got a lovely property, but you can see here, they've had that problem and they've they sort of cut, but you've got half bond here and quarter bond there. Whereas if you were doing quarter bond, you could then have that three quarter there and the header, and you wouldn't be having two sorts of bond, you know? I mean... Wild bond. It's wild bond. It's, it's the struggle bond. Anything we call ourselves the struggle bond, don't we? It's the struggle brothers bond. Um, but... OK, you might not do houses in this bond all the time, but it does look fantastic, because we do them. And if you go to Germany and Holland, that's all they use, is this sort of quarter bond. I mean, the first night I went to Germany, I've been down the red light area, and I came back in about 3 o'clock in the morning, and I was looking at the bond, which they do, and of course, there ain't no bond. I was going five stretches, header, six. The next course was totally different. Anyway, I got out of it. Um, 
Anything else, Mick? Can you think of anything else I've got to say? No, no, no. no. Beer? Beer. You see? Yeah, I've got, yeah. got to have one. You know I've got to have a beer. Yeah, yeah. This will be our last video for a while, won't it? Because we've yeah, got yeah, to do yeah. the rest. We've yeah. Mick's got to do some camera yeah. work lessons and we've got to... There he goes. He's going on a course. Course, eh? Hang on a minute. Hang on. There's old banger. You'd think you'd buy an iron, wouldn't you? That's, he only he only passed his test when he was 40. Can you believe it? And he buys old bangers. If he spends 200 pound, that's a lot of money on a car. Look out, he's got two beers. Here he comes, struggling. You know, last time, yeah. I had complaints because I didn't get you a beer. I know. People were moaning. I've got you. I've, I've been drinking it, but you've got half there. Yeah. So, um, <laughs> what? No, no, you, seriously. I've got your beer, so I'm not that bad. Um, this one, just get the trail. Uh, we're now going to show a quick bit of video for all you guys that was in Germany and Holland. You might recognise some of the lads on here, because we had a lot of lads with us and uh, from all over the place. So if you do, in the comments, put, is that so-and-so, you know, all that business. Um, OK, it's Belgian beer again, apparently. Cider. Look, they spelt it wrong, they put R-E. Um, but doesn't matter. It's absolutely beautiful cider, this, so... It's delicious, mate. Okay, so we've got to go now, me. Yeah. Yeah, because we've got to get home. It's late. It's gone five o'clock. It's late for me and Mick. And, okay. See so you on the next one. Okay, I'll feed the Zane. See you later, Mick. Yeah. Okay. Well done. Okay. That's it, yeah. Mick, yeah. I was shattered, Mick. I've been doing all the work today. <laughs>
94. Yeah. Hey, come, back. come back here. Hurry up, Jack. <laughs> <laughs> you going to cut off what you're going to cut off. I was going to be 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 going to be I was going to I was going to I was going to Tell us when I'm in shot. You're in shot. I'm in shot now. Yeah. Okay, lads, this is really quick uh, something for you. Um, yeah, okay. Just quickly, in July, July the 14th, Sunday, in Hastings, we have what we call Pirates Day. I'll just show you a quick little video of it so you can see what it's like. But if you've got a family and kids and you want to book in Saturday night in Hastings, this is really worth coming to. Why I'm saying it is on the Saturday, we've got a little gig, well, quite a big gig going on. There's a private party afterwards where I am obviously going, obviously. Um, but if you come and you say you're with Glenn and you'll see me in my white suit, you will get into this private party where all the musicians will be playing and everything. So if you've got a family, they can do parts day, you can come out for a drink. If you wear a little badge or something and there's any other brickers, you'll know who they are. You can have a drink, get to know them all um, and have a good weekend, maybe meet some friends. Um, it's really up to you. I'm not worried, you know, obviously, but I'm just telling you, it is a good weekend in Hastings, and you'll meet a lot of people, and we'll have a laugh, and, uh... They'll uh, meet you. Well, they'll meet me. Mick, Mick might not be there, but he's going to send us a tape. You can send a tape, can you? If you can't, want can't I come, then? Well, if you want to come, but you'll have to come incognito. They can't see you. You'll have to wear a mask. Um, so that's it. If you fancy it, um... Put a comment and say, yeah, and if there's enough of you, I'll give you more details. What do you mean I've got to wear a mask? Well, I don't want to recognise and see in your face. Why not? Well, they couldn't do it. He looks like Paul Newman. No. He's actually, um... Come no, on. I'm not going to say it. Uh, Mick, that's it. OK, yeah, so if you do, just comment and I'll, we'll sort something out, OK? And we'll have a laugh. Got a good day in the summer. You know, better than going abroad, all that Brexit stuff, you know. OK, thanks again, boys. See you soon. Is that it, Mick? Yeah. Yeah, they might come, mightn't they? They might. And I'd like to say thank you for your patience and thank you for waiting in a very crowded area. You've done brilliantly today. Thank you. Now, without any further ado, I'm going to announce the record. Now, the previous record was 1,878, so quite a lot to beat. And I can now give you the figure. Two years ago, you set the record at 6,166. It was then broken in Penzance with 8,734. I can now confirm that gathered here today are a total of 14,200.